Okay, so in today's Blender tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys step-by-step step how to make this Viking hammer. So we're gonna do some extremely basic modeling. It's only gonna take a few minutes. And then we're just gonna do the most basic sculpting you've ever seen, just adding these little nicks and dents and stuff. You don't even have to be good at sculpting. I think this result is pretty good and it's kind of just like this cool Viking hammer, like I said. And this is kind of like the result if you go into the rendered mode. So I'm gonna show you how to do this from beginning to end and if you make a cool result share it on the discord group in the description below and i'm also going to be uploading my final result to my patreon so you can check that out in the description below so let's jump in and i hope you guys enjoy learning how to make um, this viking hammer here in blender okay so when you scene open up in blender we're going to start by selecting the default cube and we're going to go into our front orthographic view and what we're going to do we're going to tab into edit mode and we're not gonna be using the mirror modifier here because we want this to kind of be a little bit not even on both sides. So we're gonna go S, X with everything selected. Let's scale it along the X about this much. We're gonna go Control R and add in a loop in the middle and just double click. And if that's still active, we're gonna go S, Z and just scale it up into Z a little bit like this. So now we have something like this and then we're gonna go A to select everything. We're gonna go S, Y and just flatten that a little bit on the Y. And uh, let's go over here. And let's select a face like option. Let's select this face and this face here. Let's go control B. So control B just to bevel and let's bevel it about this much. And let's grab these two faces here and let's go I to inset it. And you're wondering why don't we just do it at the same time so they're mirrored. And the thing is we want them to be a little bit different because um, this is a rough object. So we're not gonna worry about symmetry here. Just eyeing it will be fine. And let's extrude this out a little bit about that much. Let's grab these two and let's extrude them out a little bit. All right, once again, we're not worried about them being perfectly the same at all. We're gonna be sculpting this anyway to add some randomness. So now let's go a step beyond this. Let's tab out and let's go Shift A. Let's add in a circle. Let's go G, Z, move the circle up. Let's tab into edit mode and let's go to our vertex option. Let's go S to scale it down about this much. Now we're gonna go S, X and scale it along the X like so. I might scale it down just a little bit more, something like that. And let's go E to extrude and Z and extrude it down on the Z. And let's take it in about that much and bring it up a little bit. So something like that. And let's go E to extrude and then let go and let's go Alt S and scale those faces out along the normals like that. So now we've just given it some thickness. And let's just, with this whole thing selected, select it, let's go Shift D to duplicate and Z now let's just bring that down to the bottom, like so. Right there, okay, so now we have that, and we have that. What we're gonna do, we're gonna tab back out, and we're gonna grab these. Holding and shift, let's select the hammerhead and go Control J and just join it. And now these are all joined as one object. Okay, what we can do actually quickly, because it's gonna be important, is we can just tab into edit mode and just select this edge here. So Shift Alt and just click on this edge to loop select it. Shift D to duplicate, right click to let go, and then go P. Let's separate that selection. So let's tab back out. And now if you see here in object mode, we have this separate selection. Let's just select it, tab back in, press A to select it, and let's scale it a tiny bit, and go G, Z, and move it up. Let's just press F to fill it as a face, and let's just go into our front view, and let's go E to extrude and Z, and extrude it down on the Z, like so. Now I'm gonna bring mine probably to about here. And then at this point, I'm gonna go E to extrude and Z, bring it down. And at this point, I'm gonna scale it a bit by pressing S. And yeah, something like that. And what we're gonna do is actually just select this bottom here and go X and just delete those faces. Let's just select this edge and we're gonna do one more thing. We're just gonna go Shift D to duplicate. And let's go S to scale that duplication. Let's go E to extrude and Z, extrude it up like so. And then E to extrude S to scale, let's uh, scale it in a little bit. And let's go E to extrude and Z, bring it down and then S to scale. So we just have this kind of lip. And let's select this outer edge here and we're gonna go extrude it down, scale it a bit. And then we're gonna extrude it down and scale it up a bit. And let's go E to extrude, something like that. And uh, let's just go F to fill that and go Control B to bevel. And let's just roll in a few segments, so something like that. You can select the whole thing, scale it up a bit if you want. 
Just something that looks like that should be good. And we're gonna right click and go shade smooth in object mode. And what I think we should do here is actually select this thing here in edit mode and go P, separate selection, tab back out. And then grab this as a separate part and holding in shift, select the hammerhead and then go control J and then join it together. So now this is all one piece. And what we're gonna do if this active is we're gonna go over to our modifiers and let's first of all, make sure to save quickly. So I'm saving and let's give this a remesh, okay? And you can see it's kind of messing things up down here. So let's just come here to the voxel size and make it 0.04. And uh, that's kind of not helped things very much. Let's just maybe leave the remeshing for now. I'm just gonna leave the remeshing. And if this all selected, we're just gonna go straight into our sculpting workspace. And let's go over enable dynamic topology, go okay. And under our dynamic topology, let's go to the detail size and make it five. And we're gonna come here and grab our clay strips brush. We're gonna come to our strength and make it 0.15. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here and we're just gonna go around and let's just lay some strips of clay just to add some imperfection to the surfaces and the corners, all around the corners like this. It doesn't matter if you overlap a little bit. So you can see what we did there. And if you can't really make this out, go over here to the drop down here and let's just enable for now. Let's enable our wireframe. So you can kind of see how the retopology is working here in real time. So you can see these sharp corners here. Let's just go around them like this, just to kind of dull them a little bit. And we're gonna smooth them out in a second anyway. But this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna retopologize it by going over like this, adding some kind of like bumpiness to the surfaces all around the sharp corners. This is really simple. You don't even need to know anything about sculpting technique to do this. All we're doing is just going over the surfaces adding little imperfections, especially around the corners like this. And around here, let's go up, let's go out. And this is relative detail. So the closer we zoom in, um, the sharper the detail becomes. So we're just kind of staying close enough to it. So we just get the kind of moderate retopology happening here or dynamic topology. So all I'm doing is just going around the corners here and it's very simple to follow along. So let's go here, maybe here a little bit, up here. Let's just round these out a little bit and maybe just over here like that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go up here to the drop down again. Let's just get rid of the wireframe. I think that's looking okay for now. Um, but what we need to do is we need to hold in shift and then lightly smooth out some of these corners here so they're not as sharp. So some of these areas here, we can definitely come and just flatten them a little bit, not everywhere, but just make it look like they've kind of been worn out. So over here, I'm just holding in shift and the brush just becomes a smooth brush, holding in shift while I'm doing this. So let's maybe make it over here, over here. I think you guys kind of get where we're going with this. So very simple, maybe over here a little bit, over here, smooth this out. Okay, so now you can see our hammer is looking a lot more natural kind of getting rid of a lot of these sharp corners. But what we're gonna do now is under the dynamic topology, let's just enable smooth shading. And let's just come here, get our clay strips brush. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna increase the strength. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here to the end bits and we're just gonna go hold in control. And that's gonna inverse it. And that's gonna do the opposite of the actual brush. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna make these little displacements like this, like where it's kind of been dinged and where we want it to be hollowed out, we're just gonna hold in control and just make these little like bits going over like this, kind of like it's had an impact and it's kind of smeared the metal a little bit and some places we'll just kind of add it like this and then where we want it hollow, we'll just hold in control. So just making these little areas where it's gotten hit over the years. So you wanna make it look like it's seen battle or use, whatever it is. And let's come up here, let's just make some little divots and let's come over here, maybe just add a little bit of a ding here. It's completely up to you. I mean, this isn't something that you should copy exactly like I'm doing it. You can really make it your own by um, sculpting it however you want. So I think that's looking pretty good. I might come down here, something like that. And at the back, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna add some scuffs, some dings, just holding in control to do the inverse for the brush and really just making it look like it's seen some action, right? It doesn't matter what it's used for. A hammer, um, especially in Viking days, would definitely have seen a lot of um, use. So 
you know, just adding those elements of wear and tear around here is really good. So something like that looks good. But what we need to do as well is we need to come in here. And for some reason, dynamic topology is turned off. So I'm just going to turn it back on. We need to come in here and let's just add some detail to this bit up here. So I'm just going around with the clay strips brush. And I'm going to come down here, just simply going over it, just to add some more topology to it like this. There we go. And then kind of like adding a little bit of a bead around the edge like this. Just kind of make it look like it's kind of been welded together. So I'm just going like that. And maybe around here a little bit. Like so. And you can see that's looking a lot more um, a lot more organic. Kind of like that folded metal look. And let's do the same thing up here. We're just going to do it like so. And maybe around here a little bit. And then I'm holding and shift just to smooth it a little bit in places where I want to kind of lessen the detail, but you guys kind of see where we're going with this, right? Really making this hammer look like it's seen some action. So what I'm going to do over here maybe is also add to some dings. And I think that's looking good. But what we're going to do now, now that we've had to have this detail, we're going to come to the front view and let's just add some detail. I'm just going to go to my clay strips brush. I'm going to increase the strength to about 0.3. I'm going to go F to shrink the brush and coming in here, let's just make a little decorative pattern. Now I'm just completely going to make something up that I think looks like a Viking would have made it. So I'm going to come here, kind of make like this C. It doesn't matter if they don't look symmetrical because this would have been done by hand, right? So we're going to make something like that. Let's come over and make a line kind of connecting them. Like so. And then let's maybe come and make another sort of C shape like this. Just make something decorative. You can do um, curls, letters, whatever you think might look really Viking-y, right? Do your own research, but you get the idea. I think that looks really cool. And then I'm gonna to go to the other side, so the back. So we're in the back orthographic, and I'm gonna try and just match it. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. Once again, it wouldn't have been in real life anyway, as it's kind of like hand carved. So let's go something like this. Let's make a strip coming across, and let's zoom in, and let's make kind of like a C pattern here. And over here, we're gonna carve it out like that. And I think that's looking pretty cool. Might smooth it out a little bit in some places, but now we really look like this has some kind of use to it, right? And uh, that's looking okay for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my layout. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this kind of wooden pole bit and we're gonna go and go into our sculpting workspace. Enable dynamic topology. And let's come in here and let's, with our clay strips brush, bring the strength down to by 0.1. Let's grow our brush and let's just come up here and kind of give it a little bit of surface wear. So I'm gonna increase the strength and I'm kind of just adding these strips running across here, just to make it look like the wood is kind of hand carved, right? We don't want it to look perfectly flat. And then over here, we're gonna come and just lay down kind of like these strips like this. And I'm gonna increase the strength and I'm just adding these light strips. And if they're a little bit too strong, I'll bring the strength down like this, just making it look like it's um, not a perfectly machined piece of wood. This is would have been something that would have been carved by hand. So I'm just adding these strips going like this and then holding and shift and smoothing it where I need to. So maybe over here, I'm just gonna come add some strips of clay with the clay strips brush. Maybe over here, just add a few. Over here, add a few. Then over here, and like that. Just really making it look like it's seen some wear and tear. Maybe a little bit over here, a little bit up here, and a little bit over here as well on the handle. Now let's just also come here to our dynamic topology, make sure smooth shading is enabled, which it is. But for now, you guys can see this is looking a lot more uh, like it's a little bit woody. Like it has kind of like this grain structure to it. And all I've done to make that is I've just gone up and down with this clay strips, lightly adding a few strips, holding and shift here and there and just smoothing it out a little bit. And I think that adds a lot of cool effect. So you can see that's already looking really awesome. Uh, one more thing, let's just go into the layout. Let's just quickly select the handle and the hammer bit again. And let's just quickly go back into the sculpting workspace. Enable dynamic topology, and I'm just gonna quickly, with that same brush and settings, I'm just gonna quickly come here and just add a few little details and strips 
to this bottom bit. I don't want it to look too perfect. Once again, we want kind of like this forged metal look. A good way to do that is just to get the clay strips brush and lightly add some strips back and forth like this all the way around and just make it look like it's been made by hand. So I'm gonna come here, same thing, just going all the way around. And then up here on the rim, I'm just gonna go all the way around, just adding that sort of surface detail. Very easy guys, like you can see here, you don't have to be good at sculpting one bit to do this. This is super simple. We're just going around like this, just adding these little strips. And I think once it gets a little bit too much, as always, just stand back, hold in shift, and just smooth it out with a few light smoothing passes. So there we go. Something like that is looking really good. And maybe just one more strip here and one back here. Okay, now that's looking like it's been kind of folded in a forge, so I'm really happy with that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now go back into the layout. And I think we now have a hammer here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just grab the whole thing. We're gonna go S to scale it down a bit, move it up. And let's grab our camera and our scene and let's just bring our camera in closer like this. I'm gonna just adjust it a little bit. So something like this where we can see it. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna bring it in so it's looking more from the front like this. Okay, now we have it set up, let's go over to our render settings. Let's make it cycles. Let's make the device a GPU if you have one. And then we're gonna go Control B while we're in camera view. So Control B or Command B and just drag over. And this is gonna limit the render to this section here. And now we can go Z and we can go rendered. And we can kind of see this, but what we want is a bit of nicer lighting. So let's go to our um, world properties here. Let's go to our color. Let's give it an environment texture and let's go and find one. So what I'm gonna quickly show you guys, if you go to the internet and you go to HDRI Haven, so just type in HDRI Haven or Poly Haven as it's called. So you'll see Poly Haven and um, it'll come up with HDRIs, okay? So I said, I said HDRI Haven, but I meant Poly Haven. So you're gonna click on that and then you're gonna see all of these HDRIs, okay? You're gonna click on whichever one you want. Just pick one, it doesn't matter and then you can just download it. It's gonna download it as an EXR and you can choose your resolution. That's not the point. Once you found one that you like, find it wherever it is in your computer. I already have some, so I'm just gonna to go to HDRIs and I just got one that I like. I'm gonna grab that and now I have it loaded in. Then I'm gonna go over to my render properties. I'm just gonna go down to where it says film and I'm gonna enable transparent. So we have a transparent background. And at this point, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in an area light. So let's go to Shift A, light, add in an area light. Oops, I don't know why I added that in. I was meant to add an area light. So there we go, area light. And we're gonna go over to our light settings. Let's make it 200 on the strength and increase the size a little bit. And at this point, um, you guys know the drill, right? Just add your lighting. You can duplicate your light by going Shift D you can rotate and you can move. And this is about finding a lighting setup that you like. So I'm gonna go something like this and I might duplicate it and place it nice and behind here so we get some nice room lighting. But what we need to do now is actually go to our shading workspace and let's just import our first shader. So we're gonna go over to the internet again. And when you're on polyhaven.com, you can simply go to assets and go to textures. And then you're gonna to go to wood and then you can choose any one of these woods that you want. I've gone with the dark wood here. I've already downloaded that. And it's gonna download it as a um, blend file. So a folder with a blend file in it. So all you have to do is very simply download that, extract the zip folder. I've already done that. So I'm gonna go file and then I'm gonna to go to append. I already put that in a folder on my computer and that's under um, just a special place that I have. But the folder that I've downloaded it from um, the website here. Once you extract that folder, it's gonna look like something like this. So the one I have here, it's just called wooden table. That's what I'm gonna go with. You can choose whichever one you want. So you're gonna click on a blend file. You're gonna go to the material. You're gonna click on the material, append it. And then all you have to do is select the wooden handle. Come here to your material dropdown and then select that imported material. And so you don't have to 
worry about UV unwrapping. All we're gonna do is we're gonna come to this material here and where it says the flat projection, we're gonna change all of those to box on each one of these image textures. So we're gonna change them all to box and that's gonna make them map procedurally. So let's change all of this to box. And then you're gonna come over here to where the mapping is and you're just gonna take the object and plug it into the vector. So you get kind of like this procedural mapping. So we don't have to worry about UV. So now you can see the wood is beautifully mapped onto here. And now we're just gonna select the hammer bit. And if it doesn't already have a material, um, you can go ahead to your materials and just give it one. Because we used the default cube, it should have a default material here, just called material. So what we're gonna do at this point, so we're gonna go into camera view. We're gonna go Z, we're gonna go rendered. And let's come over here and let's go shift A, search and get a noise texture. Let's plug the color into the base color. Let's go shift A, search and get a color ramp. Place it over here. And let's tighten up these values so we can see what we're dealing with. Okay, so at this point you can adjust the scale however you want. But the main thing you wanna do is bring up the detail here and then bring up the roughness till you get a texture that you like. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the metallic value, increase it all the way up to one and then bring the roughness down. Now at this point, we wanna actually take the output here. So let's go shift A, search and get a bump node. Let's take the color, plug it into the height. And let's take this normal now and plug it into the normal of the principal shader. So we're gonna to come to the strength over here. We're gonna make it 0.3. And let's come up here now and plug it out of the base color. And we're actually gonna grab this base color here and we're gonna make it a bit darker, like so. Now at this point, this is way too strong. So we can take the strength down till we like what we have here a little bit more. Now you can see we have this kind of nice pitted metal material and it's looking pretty good. So that is pretty much how I made this. I think what you could do is probably go to the roughness here and increase it just a little bit more. So it's not quite as shiny. And um, you could probably duplicate this color ramp, plug the color of the noise texture into here, plug the color back into the base color, and then just grab this black value over here. It's a little bit too intense. Let's just make that a little bit more gray. And let's grab this one and make it a little bit darker in value. And now you have a bit of a texture to your metal as well. If you want to, you could add mapping to your noise texture using the Node Wrangler. So that's just a mapping node that I've put in here into the vector. And then a texture coordinate with a generated. And that just maps things a little bit better. You can also try the object. But there's all sorts of ways you can make metal textures. You can look online. Um, there's a billion videos on YouTube on how to make these sort of textures. I'm mainly showing you guys here how to kind of make this sort of Viking hammer. So there's one more little touch we're gonna do just to make this look even more realistic. We're gonna go back into our layout. And let's go shift A, let's just add in a cube. G, Z, move it up. Let's scale this cube down and let's just place it over the top of our hammer here and just scale it down. And this is gonna be a little plate that sits in here. And this is what they'd hammer in to the top here, just to make it embed the wood and tighten the, um, to really fasten it to the top here. So we're just gonna scale it till it fits in here, like so. There we go. And bring it down, and this would have been hammered in. So let's just scale it up a little bit. And once you have it, just tab in, and then go Control B, and just give it a little bit of a bevel. Tab back out, and then what you can do is you can give this thing here that same metal material. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, you can see we have that little um, plate in here. Now to make it look even a little bit more embedded, you can select your wood over here, go back to your sculpting workspace, enable dynamic topology, and then just go to your top view and then shrink your brush, get the, the clay strips brush, and then just add some nice strips of clay along here. That's just gonna make it look, as you can see here, like that's kind of displaced the wood a little bit as it's been hammered in there. And that just adds a little bit more realism to your, um, to your hammer here. But that is pretty much the basics of it. So let's just go over here to our shading. Let's go down and enable the cavity view. And now you can kind of really see the details being pushed out. So let's um, save. And now let's go render and render image and let's see what this looks like. And there we have it, it's looking pretty cool. What we could try is we can change the slot to slot two over here and close it. And uh, let's grab our camera, actually. 
And let's try and adjust the angle a little bit, get a bit of a nicer top view render maybe. Let's try that, see what we get. And that's looking pretty good as well. So you can see here, these are our render um, results so far. And what I'm gonna do here quickly is show you guys my original. So here's the original I did. The, one with, the thing with this one is I spent a little bit more time adding some scrapes, but I also just um, messed around with my lighting a little bit more, messed around with my metal color and stuff, but overall it's the exact same thing. So it's really fun um, making a Viking hammer. I encourage you guys to give it a shot and share your results on the Pixo 3D community. You can find the links to that in the description below. So I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.